QQQ is considered one of the best growth ETFs in existence, and when it comes to the stock market, there is no investment without growth. So today we're gonna see how this giant growth ETF compares to six other great growth ETFs, and I'm gonna make available to you completely for free the whole Google Sheet file that you can tweak as you like. My name is Rick, your trusted investor, and this is the ultimate growth ETFs comparison. Let's start by showing the table that we're gonna use today. For every ETF, we're going to compare dividend yield, expense ratio, but above all, we're gonna focus on diversification and performance. In particular, the number of holdings, the weight of the tech sector, and the top 10 holdings are gonna be our focus for diversification. While for performance, we're gonna see the performance of the last 20, 10, and five years. In the end, we're gonna weigh these factors and come out with a grade or a number of points for each ETF. Now, by changing the weight or importance that you wanna to give to diversification and performance, you're gonna be able to get a weighted result of what ETFs are actually best for you. In this video, I'm also gonna explain the index and the criteria used to choose the companies, and you're gonna find all this information in the Google file that, as I said, I'm gonna make available to you totally for free through the link in the description below. The only thing I ask you is to be nice and use one second of your time to like this video because, as you can imagine, only with your support I can grow my channel, and one day, maybe I'll be able to dedicate all my time to it instead of endless nights after my regular job. So grab your free file from the description, click like, subscribe to the channel, and now let's go on with the video. The first ETF, as you can imagine, is QQQ. The Invesco QQQ Trust ETF is based on the Nasdaq 100 index, it has a total expense ratio of 0.20% and a total number of holdings of 101. In case you're interested in the dividend yield, Although it's not the most important factor for growth, QQQ gave a dividend yield of 0.58% in the last 12 months. The weight in the top 10 holdings is 50.92%, with the usual titans like Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, and so on, and the total weight of information technology equals 52.22%. When it comes to performance, QQQ delivered an average annual return of 14.46% in the last 20 years, 18.65% in the last 10, and 21.51% in the last five. QQQ tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, which measures the performance of the hundreds largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange. This means that, number one, they need to be in the global select or global market tier of the NASDAQ. Number two, they must be classified as a non-financial company. Number three, they need to have a minimum average daily trading volume of 200,000 shares, Number four, they need to be trading for at least three full months. And number five, the companies can't be in any bankruptcy proceedings. The first ETF we're gonna compare to QQQ is the Vanguard Growth Index Fund ETF, with ticker VUG. VUG has a dividend yield of 0.5%, an expense ratio of 0.04%, a total of 199 holdings with 59.77% focus on the top 10 holdings and deliver an average annual return of 11.82% in the last 20 years, 15.35% in the last 10, and 18.82% in the last five. With 0.04% expense ratio, this fund is based on the CRISP US Large Cap Growth Index. This index currently includes 199 holdings, and the way it chooses them is that they start with the US Total Market Index, they take the large cap company from there, and then they score each equity to determine whether it's a growth stock or a value stock. Next ETF is the Vanguard Russell 1000 Growth ETF ticker VONG, or VONG. VONG has a dividend yield of 0.63%, an expense ratio of 0.08%, and a total number of holdings of 440, with a concentration on both tech and the top 10 holdings of around 55%. When it comes to performance, VONG delivered an average annual return of 12.61% in the last 20 years, 16.22% in the last 10, and 19.26% in the last five. The index tract is called Russell 1000 Growth Index. It takes US companies with a share price above $1 and a market cap above $30 million that have more than 5% of their shares available. Then they take this list and sort it by market cap, getting the top 1000 positions as the Russell 1000. And then they get to the position of VONG by applying growth versus value criteria. Next up, we have VGT, the glorious Vanguard Information Technology Index Fund ETF. 
VGT has a dividend yield of 0.64%, an expense ratio of 0.1%, and a total number of holdings of 321, which are basically all from the technology sector. The top 10 holdings weight 60.81% of the total portfolio. And as for performance, VGT delivered an average annual return of 14.7% in the last 20 years, 20.87% in the last 10, and 23.36% in the last 5. VGT is based on the MSCI US Investable Market Index Information Technology 25-50. In terms of criteria, VGT is pretty simple. It takes US equities in the technology sector weighted by market cap, it can have no more than 25% in one single stock, and the sum of all stocks that have a weight greater than 5% can be equal to more than 50% of the index. Next up is XLK, the Technology Select Sector Spider Fund ETF. XLK has a dividend yield of 0.67%, an expense ratio of 0.09%, and the lowest number of holdings in this list with 67 positions. All focus on the technology sector. The top 10 holdings weigh 65.94% of the total portfolio. When it comes to performance, XLK delivered an average annual return of 14.27% in the last 20 years, 21% in the last 10, and 24.94% in the last 5. XLK is based on the Technology Select Sector Index that takes US equities from the S&P 500 within the information technology sector and weights them by market cap with no more than 25% into one single stock. The difference with VGT is that XLK only includes technology stocks that are in the S&P 500, whereas VGT chooses among all US stocks in the technology sector. Next one is SPYG, the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 Growth ETF. SPYG has a dividend yield of 0.77%, a cheap expense ratio of 0.04%, and a quite diversified pot of 237 holdings. The top 10 holdings weight 60.45% of the total portfolio, and the ETF delivered an average annual return of 11.37% in the last 20 years, 14.88% in the last 10, and 16.84% in the last 5. SPYG is based on the S&P 500 Growth Index that starts with US equities in the S&P 500, and then it measures growth versus value based on different criteria, including earnings per share and momentum. Last but not least, the Schwab's US Large Cap Growth ETF SCHG, which is one of my favorites after QQQ and for which I made a detailed comparison with QQQ not long ago in this video here that you can check out later from my channel or from the link here. SCHG has a dividend yield of 0.41%, a cheap expense ratio of 0.04%, and 251 holdings. 46% of them are in the information technology sector, and 60.79% of the whole ETF is made out of the first 10 companies. When it comes to performance, the ETF is 14 years old, so here I assume the realistic value of how it would have performed if it were older, because I didn't want to disadvantage this ETF because of a missing value. The 10-year annual return of 16.28% and the 5-year annual return of 20.05% are instead historical value. SHG is based off the Dow Jones US Large Cap Growth Total Stock Market Index. This index selects US equities sorted by market cap, and then using criteria like price to earning ratio, revenue and earnings growth, and price to book ratio, they choose the growth part that will land in the ETF. All right, now that we have all the information about the ETFs, let's take a look at this table together. First of all, up here, you see the values that we give to diversification and performance in order to weight the points that we give to each ETF. Right now we have 50-50, namely diversification has the same importance as performance. But I'm gonna show you later what happens if we change it. If we look at return, we can see that in the 20 years return, actually the best one out of all of them is QQQ. While going to 10 years and five years, VGT and XLK start performing better than QQQ a little bit because they are the ones that are fully invested in the information technology sector. And in the last decade, this sector was the one that overperformed all others. What you can notice though, is that right after VGT and XLK, you have QQQ, that while being more diversified, manages to have almost the same performance as pure information technology ETFs. If we dive into the holdings a little bit, we can see the differences in diversification between the funds. XLK and VGT are focused on tech, as we've seen. And this might be a good thing if you have total trust 
the technology is not going to crash again like it did in 2000. Well, on the other hand, it's quite dangerous when you think that technology right now has the highest price to earning ratio of the last 10 years. So the price of the sector is totally overpriced compared to what companies are actually delivering as earnings. All the other ETFs have around 50, 60% in technology and QQQ, SPYG and above all SCHG show the highest sector diversification. The same pattern repeats itself with the top 10 holdings, except that here, SCHG, despite 251 holdings, has a really high concentration of the top 10, while QQQ steals the first place here with the lowest concentration on the top holdings. So now you're starting to get a good impression at how these ETFs differ from one another. Some are more diversified, and some instead are more focused on tech. And the past performance grows more or less the higher the focus on tech is. So as you can see, it's hard to make an absolute decision without choosing how much diversification you want and how much past performance instead is important for you. So in this table that you can download for free from the description, I used a points method of grading that automatically gives a grade here based on the three diversification factors and a grade here based on the three performance factors. And then weights the two grades based on the level of risk you're ready to carry and therefore how important are diversification and performance for you, giving you as a result the total final weight. So when you download this file in the future, you just have to update the diversification and performance values and the table calculates the results for you automatically. If you don't know how much you want to risk and therefore how much importance you want to give to diversification and to performance, your best course is probably just to keep diversification and performance at 50% each. Now with 50-50, which is the perfect balance, QQQ comes out as a winner with 15 points followed by VGT as a close second and SCHG in third position. What I realized from this is that QQQ is really a wonderful ETF because it has the best balance between sector and company diversification, but also a wonderful long-term performance. VGT is a close second because even though it's way too risky because it's all on information technology, it had the best long-term performance. SCHG in third position does the opposite of VGT, namely it's much better diversified, but not as good when it comes to performance. Instead, the worst ETF comes out to be SPYG, which not only is not well diversified, but also it doesn't have a great performance to show for. To conclude the video, I wanna show you what happens if I set 70% on diversification. And as you can see, the performance weight goes automatically to 30%. Now with this configuration, QQQ is still the best ETF, but this time, right with the same points, we have VONG, which is just a little shorter on performance, but on the other hand, has a great diversification with 440 holdings and a good distribution in the sectors. VGT here goes down to 12.7 points because now performance only has 30% of weight. If I instead decide that I don't care about diversification and I only care about past performance, I can put here, for example, 30% diversification, and as you can see, VGT obviously becomes the winner. But probably the most important thing is that still, QQQ remains a close number two. If you wanna play with this file, you can download it for free from the description below, so just check it out and write me a comment with any question. If I could give you any value with this video, remember that the best way to say thanks and help me out with my work is to subscribe to the channel and drop a beautiful like to this video. For you, it's free, but it helps me a lot because I work every evening and on the weekends on these videos, and I'd like at some point in the future to be able to dedicate all my time to just create valuable content for you. So thank you for watching until the end. I wish you a great day or evening, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.